Navigating the timeline and the storyboard is actually very easy and useful inside of SpeedEdit. Let's start with the timeline. I want to move the cursor until I'm up in the timecode area up here and the cursor turns into a vertical line with arrows to the left and to the right. Now, if you hold down the right mouse button and you pan to the left and the right, or if you move the mouse to the left and the right, you're going to be panning your project. And if you push the mouse away, you're going to zoom in. And if you pull the mouse back, you're going to zoom out. And the zooming is sensitive to where the cursor is. So if you position the cursor over the beginning of the project, and now if I push away with the right mouse push down, I'm zooming in on the very beginning of the project. Again, if I pull the mouse back, I zoom out. Let's move the cursor to the end. Right mouse and hold and push the mouse away zooms in on the end of the project, pull the mouse back, and it comes back. Now, if you have nothing selected in either window, so and you can make sure that you don't by clicking in an empty area in the storyboard and an empty area in the timeline, now double clicking in the timeline is going to auto fit the timeline and you'll see the entire project. If you want to see a specific portion of the project, besides manually zooming in and out where you want to be on the project, you can select a portion of the project inside of the storyboard. So you can go ahead and click on a specific clip and then come down here and double click and it's going to go ahead and zoom in and auto fit that clip that you have selected up in the storyboard. You could come up here again and drag out a box and select several clips and then come down here and double click and it's going to auto fit whatever clips you have selected down here. Again, if I deselect and I double click, auto fits the entire project. Now, you can also use two timelines, bring up a secondary timeline here, and I'm going to double click. Now I'm looking at the timeline twice, and I can drag out a box and select the clips that I want to work on here, double click, and it's going to zoom me in specifically where I have the clip selected in the timeline up top. So several different ways of navigating the timeline and the storyboard here inside of SpeedEdit. When we work with icons in the timeline, we can see the first and last frame on our video clips. We can also see the picture as the first and last frame on stills. And we can adjust those icons by using this menu right up here in the upper right hand corner. And the first thing that we can do is we can adjust the icon mode. We can adjust the clip icon, the transition icon, an overlay icon, or an effect icon. But the main icons are right up here. And it defaults to the in and the out but you can set it to none which is actually very useful when you start working with really big images it makes zooming in and out on the timeline much smoother when it doesn't have to redraw and calculate all those images uh, we can also go to the money shot which is just a single icon or a single image on each icon of the video clip uh, and go back to in and out Another option we have from this menu is the ability to enable the play range. And the play range is a range settable by the user uh, with an in point and an out point, and it's a range of the project that you want to be able to play. So if I use the space bar to start my project playing back, it's only going to play in the area that I have selected up here as the range, and then it's going to stop. And if I hit the home key, the home key takes me to the beginning of the project, but if I hit spacebar again to start the project, it jumps right to the beginning of that play range. So basically it locks the area of the project that can be played back down to whatever's selected. Now, as I said, you can set an in and an out point. You can also grab the range here in the center and you can slide it using slip and slide. If you want to turn the play range back off, we just come back over to this menu and disengage it. Another way to modify clips once they're inside the edit is to go ahead and select a clip and when a clip is selected either in the timeline or the storyboard it's going to show up down here in the clip information area and this shows me the name of the clip shows me the duration for the audio and the video it allows me to lock and unlock the audio and video on a clip it allows me to say I only want to see the audio I only want to hear the audio playback so I can turn off the video for the clip or I can turn off the audio for the clip. And this even works if I select multiple clips. I can come through and left click and drag out and select the first portion and then click this audio button and it removes the audio from all those clips at the same time. So it's a great way of manipulating a lot of clips at one time as well. 
Now I'm just going to go back to working with this one. You also have the ability to set an in point by dragging here and set an out point by dragging here. We can also do slip and slide by clicking and dragging on the middle of the clip and we can turn its overlay properties on and off as well. So a lot of clip manipulation controls right here once you're inside the edit. Once you get a larger number of clips in the interface, and I'm just going to go ahead and select all these clips and I'm going to copy them and then paste them back in and paste them back in and paste them back in. So we have uh, a lot of clips now in the storyboard, more than can be displayed in the current window. Uh, we now have a slider over here. We can use this slider to slide through all of the available clips. And again, we have our magnifying glass over here where we can blow these clips up. We can actually go very, very large with these clips. And we can go ahead and shrink the storyboard down as well. Now, when you're working in the timeline, you do have the ability to scroll as well. You've got a scroller bar right down here. And if you grab the edge of the scroll, you can magnify, you can zoom in and out. So again, these are the same controls that you have in the area up here with the right mouse button to be able to zoom in and out, but just displayed in a different way down here. You also can have unlimited layers in your timeline. We're going to expand the timeline here. So if we had more layers in the timeline, they would be layered this way. So we could start layering videos in this way and come down in the timeline. And we would get to a point where we would have more video in the timeline that we could display. We also have the ability to zoom this timeline with our magnifying glass. And that zooms us this way. So once we start working with a lot of layers inside of the timeline, we can manipulate them by using our scroller bar, by using our magnifying glass, and by using our right mouse button up here and zooming in and out and panning left and right. Working with transitions or fades inside of SpeedEdit is quite simple. Uh, we have a way of automatically adding fades to the entire project. We want to make sure that nothing is selected in the storyboard by clicking in the gray area. Nothing is selected in the timeline by clicking in the gray area. And if you hit Alt-F, it's going to apply a fade in between each video clip inside of the project. Now this fade is going to be one second long, and that was defined inside of preferences, and you can always go back to preferences and change that to a different length of time if you want. And you now have crossfades in between each of the clips, and it also crossfades the audio nicely for you, giving you nice transitions from one video clip to another, and then nice audio transitions between them as well. Now I'm going to hit Control Z, and I'm going to undo that. You can also apply fades between specific clips. So if I want to select a specific amount of clips, I'll just select these four clips, and I hit Alt-F, it's now going to apply a fade after any clip that was selected in the project. So this automatic fade can be applied to the entire project at once, or a section of clips that you have selected. When working on the timeline, we can also take a couple of clips. Let's bring two clips in here. And we're just going to work with these two specific clips and zoom in on them. You can take two clips and you can push them together. And if you push two clips on top of each other, it automatically creates a crossfade from one clip to the other and does a crossfade in the audio for you automatically as well, giving you a beautiful smooth fade from one to the next. There are also some controls on each of the clips. Now, as we've already discussed, you have the out point control here on the clip. But if we move down a little bit, we also get a control labeled FD. And this is a fader control. And if you grab this fader, you can drag it back. You can create a video fade at the end of the clip, fading all the way out to black. Now. You have the same fader control down here on the audio control, so you can create an audio fade to match. Let's take a look at how transitions work and why we work with offsets in SpeedEdit. SpeedEdit, in its default state, will chop off the first one second of each clip on either side. And again, you can set up in preferences how much you want that offset to be. And the reason we do this is to accommodate transitions. And here's what we mean. If you take a clip, I'm going to go ahead and take this balloon clip, and I'm going to expand it to its maximum length. So there's no video left beyond this point. And let's say that I tell the editor that I want this to be the out point of the clip. Well, if I come up here 
and I try to apply a fade now, hit Alt F, I'm going to get an exclamation point. And the reason is, I told the editor that I wanted the very last frame to be the last portion, and the out point of my transition went beyond that. So it was looking for more video beyond that. It's actually now extended the clip beyond the clip's boundaries, and I have a problem, and that's why it's showing me this exclamation point. I'm going to go ahead and control Z back out of that. Now, whenever we use offsets, if we have the beginning portion of this clip chopped off, now when these clips are butted up against each other, there's enough extra video to accommodate this transition. And when you hit Alt F, you get a crossfade and it works perfectly. And this is why we like to work with offsets inside of Speed Edit. It's not necessary to do it, but once you get the workflow down, it's very fast and very effective. As you look at the current project, you can see that there's a gap and it's represented by the black space, the beginning of the project in the storyboard. If I zoom in to the beginning of the timeline, you can see that yes, there is indeed a gap here. The beginning of the project is right here at the end of the blocks that have the diagonal lines on them. So this would be empty space and then the video starts here. And you can even see the timeline travel across the black space as it's scrubbed through that time. Now, to get rid of that area at the beginning of the project, you can simply click on the black space and hit delete. And that's going to go ahead now and make the beginning of the video start right at the beginning of the project time. Now, as we look at the project, I'm going to go ahead and hit Alt F to put our dissolves in. And even once we've done this, we can still create changes in the order up here. We can grab any clip and drag it up. And as long as we don't end up with two transitions together or two clips together, we're going to be fine. You can even select a selection of clips. Let's go ahead and select a clip and hit shift and then come down here to this transition and I can move these around inside of the storyboard and as long as I don't have two clips on top of each other or two transitions on top of each other I'm going to be fine and the timeline is going to go ahead and rebuild itself right down here.